Central 6437. Uh, <coughs> wrong card. Here we are. Pilgrim Pot and Pan Company, manufacturers of fine cooking ware. For gracious living, madam. I wonder if I may step in for a few minutes and discuss our line. I'm more interested in Gertrude's. As a special advertising offer this month, we're presenting our Taste Will Tell plan. How does that sound? Confusing. Freddie, will you come in, sit down, and tell me what this is all about? I finally got a job. Now, I'll sit down. No, really, Margie, I'm a door-to-door -door salesman. For Pilgrim Pots and Pans, and Margie, have we got a gimmick. With no obligation on the customer's part at all, we go in, cook a dinner free of charge, using our own pots and pans. Get the angle? Not yet, but I'm in there fighting. Well, after each course is served, I go to the table with a pot that it was cooked in and give a sales pitch. After just serving the mistake, who's gonna turn me down? Why, Freddie, that's marvelous. Now, let's get back to Gertrude. Oh, she's supervising cook for the outfit. Makes up the menus, stuff like that. Freddie, I just love the whole idea. How much stuff have you sold so far? Well, I haven't got my license yet. I wanted to try out my sales pitch on you first. I guess it was kind of weak, wasn't it? No, Freddie, you just need a little practice, that's all. Now, let me think a minute. Oh, no, Margie, please, none of your ideas. Oh, I can see that look coming into your eyes. I've got it. What? Dad'll be home for dinner soon. You can try the whole deal out on him. The way he feels about me? <laughs> I'm not that crazy. Dad's been critical of you strictly because you haven't had a job. This puts a new aspect on the whole thing. You really think so, Margie? Oh, absolutely. And there's another wonderful thing in your favor. What is it? He missed lunch today. He'll be so hungry, he'll eat anything. Get your pots and pans. Margie, I'm home. Dad, wait till you hear the news. But first, tell me what kind of a mood you're in. How do you feel? I'm sort of hungry. Can't you say real hungry? Okay, real hungry. Star? Famished. Now, now, what's the good news? Freddy's here. I've lost my appetite. Dad, that's unkind. Especially when you haven't heard what Freddy's going to do. Oh, Margie, don't tell me it's really happened. He, he's finally taken my advice. He's, he's leaving town? He's cooking our dinner. What? And you're going to eat it. That is, if you want to help him find a job. You said you'd do anything to help him get work, remember? Yes, but I didn't say I'd go as far as suicide. Where's he now? He's out in the kitchen, toiling over a hot stove. Dad, will you wait? Mmm. What's the matter? Is that mushroom soup? Cream of mushroom, your favorite. Chicken? Roasted to a golden brown, stuffed with oyster dressing and... Well, what are we waiting for? Tell the chef the master has arrived. Oh, Dad, I knew you'd love this. Freddy? Hello, Mr. Albright. Freddy, what's this about your whipping up a little snack? Dad's ready for dinner, Freddy. Coming right up. I mean, uh, very good, madam. <laughs> you know, maybe I've been a little hasty in judging that boy. In a minute, you're going to have an entirely different opinion of him. Get a whip of that soup. Freddy, how do you do it? You go ahead and start eating, Margie. It's your father I have to sell. Sell? Mr. Albright, in affording you the pleasure of your first meal served in Pilgrim's hydroplated soup tureen, I draw to your attention the pungent aroma and distinctive garden-like flavor of the soup, captured by the seal-in process of Pilgrim cooking. Say, what is this? Sales talk. 
All right, I'm sold. Let's have the soup. In creating this new process, the Pilgrim people originated hydroplating, a finish which eliminates sweating or the formation of water globules on the metal, thus preserving the taste buds of the food prepared in the utensil. Note the delicious aroma of each vegetable, the exciting scent of each dainty spice used in its seasoning. I'm drooling. Give me that label. But I haven't finished yet. I said give it to me. <laughs> You clumsy knucklehead! Gosh, I'm sorry, Mr. Albright. Well, bring in the next course, Freddie. I'll take care of this. Yes. Oh. I'm starving, and he has to yakety yak. Well, this is Freddie's new job, Dad. He's supposed to sell you the soup tureen. Oh, the devil with a soup tureen! I'm hungry. Well, if you'll only listen to him. I don't want to listen. I want to eat. Mmm, chicken. Now that's more like it. Yes, sir. And now, Mr. Albright, before serving your entree from Pilgrim's new simulated stainless steel plated serving tray... Freddy, just a minute. What's the matter? May I ask you just one tiny little question? Why, of course. If I buy the tray, can we eat? Now he's spoiled everything. You're not supposed to buy it until Freddy finishes. Finishes what? His sales talk. I was using you as a barometer of sales resistance. Resistance? I'm so weak from hunger, you could knock me over with a piece of wet lettuce. You may as well serve the chicken, Freddy. Okay. Mmm. I can hardly wait. White or dark? Uh, everything. Clumsy knucklehead. Gee, I'm sorry. Now wait, Dad. Where are you going? Down to the drugstore to get a hamburger. Nonsense, Mr. Crater. Who'll notice a black eye? Ah, uh, don't kid me, Honeywell. This one sticks out so far you could hang an umbrella on it. I know, but we want to close a big deal with you. We don't want you sitting up in your hotel room all alone. We want to entertain you. I'm sorry. Till this eye gets better, I'm staying away from public places. I know what we'll do. We'll have dinner in my apartment. Fine, fine. Yes? Betty, call up the deluxe catering service. Tell them I want dinner for three in my apartment tonight. Have a man come over with a menu. Right away, Mr. Honeywell. I'm glad I thought of that. That solves all our problems, and we'll... Yep. Yeah. Excuse me. Mr. Honeywell, do you know where my father is? Your father is out on a call. This is Albright's daughter, Margie. Margie, this is Mr. Crater, a prospective client. How do you do, Mr. Crater? Miss Albright, this is a pleasure. Now, Margie, remember our understanding. <laughs> Mr. Honeywell and my father have the craziest phobia about me meeting their clients. Every time something goes wrong with one of their deals, they always blame me. How do you like that? <laughs> you know how we men are, always looking for an alibi. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Honeywell. Your catering people can't come tonight. Then call another outfit. I did. Two others. They're all booked up, too. What do you need a caterer for? Well, Mr. Honeywell wants to... Never mind, Betty. That'll be all. Thank you. Yes, sir. Because of my eye, Mr. Honeywell was going to have dinner in his apartment tonight for me and your father. Oh, I have an idea. Well, now, Bargie, it's been very nice having you drop in. Mr. But... Crater, do you like mushroom soup all thick and creamy and seasoned just right? Love it. Margie, our understanding. And chicken roasted a golden brown and stuffed with oyster dressing. Mm, sounds wonderful. Then that's what I'm going to fix for you tonight in Mr. Honeywell's apartment. See you then. <laughs> yeah. Margie. Oh, I won't need any money. I'll just charge everything to you. I don't mean that. Excuse me a minute. Your father's going to be furious with you, Margie, and me, too, for letting you talk me into this. Well, then don't tell him. Let him find out when he gets there. All right, but remember, no monkey business. Well, there's a silly thought you dragged in from left field. <laughs> Lovely girl, Honeywell. Now I'm really looking forward to this evening. Yeah. By the way, we decided to make it a little surprise for a father. So don't say anything when you meet Albright. I understand, yeah. Thanks just the same, Margie, but I'm not cooking dinner at Mr. Honeywell's apartment. 
absolutely no. Okay, lose your job. You know what the pilgrim man told you this morning? Either you make a sale by tomorrow night or turn in your samples. But Margie, Mr. Honeywell hates me almost as much as your father does. But this is different, Freddie. You're doing him a favor. Besides, think of all the stuff you'll sell. Mr. Honeywell's loaded and so is Mr. Crater. Yeah. This could be my big break. Now you're talking. Freddie will make this the perfect dinner. I just thought of something. Gertrude. Huh? You know, your company's cooking expert. On a big deal like this, maybe you could get her over there to help us. Hey, that's an idea. I'll call her right away. Mr. Crater, this is Mr. Albright. Mr. Crater, it's a pleasure. Uh, thank you. I hope you'll excuse the appearance of my eye. Mr. Crater had a little run-in with his competition a couple of days ago. Oh? I'm with uh, BB Cookingware. I guess it's only natural that the merchandising tricks of the Pilgrim outfit burn me up. Pilgrim outfit? He got roped into one of those free dinners they give. <laughs> I shot my mouth off, not knowing that Gertrude, the company cook, was in the kitchen. She came out and sucked me right in the eye. I know just what you mean. I could have socked one of their salesmen myself the other night. Uh, say, that reminds me. I better phone Margie and tell her that I'm dining at your place tonight. Margie already knows. Uh, that is, uh, well, she dropped in and I told her you wouldn't be home tonight. Good. Well, shall we, shall we get started? Uh, thank you. You're pretty handy with those things, Gertrude. You should have seen me 20 years ago when I was in show business. Gosh, what did you do on the stage, Gertrude? Juggle? Are you kidding? I used to box. Here they are. Is everything all ready, Gertrude? Well, it will be as soon as you get them seated. Swell. Good evening, Mr. Crater. Good evening. Mr. Honeywell. Huh? Margie. Hi, Dad. What are you doing here? Never mind what she's doing here. A little present for our charming hostess. Well, thank you, Mr. Crater. Long have you lost your mind? I couldn't get out of it. Besides, he liked the idea. And have we got a wonderful dinner waiting for you. We? Uh, uh, you and Mr. Crater will want to freshen up first. Oh, yes, yes. Right this way, sir. Margie, I want the truth. Margie. Have you got Freddy here for one of those demonstration meals? Why, Dad, what makes you say that? Pilgrim! So what? You don't want to see Freddy lose his job, do you? And he will unless he sells some of this stuff. He's liable to lose his life unless he gets his junk out of here. Do you know who Mr. Crater is? He's the general manager of the BB Company, chief competitors of the Pilgrim outfit. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And the minute he sees what's on this table, you know what's going to happen to Mr. Honeywell and me? An account worth $100,000 to us is going to walk right out that door. But what can I do? Get Freddy and his junk out of here immediately, and that's an order. But dinner's all ready. It'll take hours for them to clean up and get the stuff out of here. Them? You mean there's somebody else here besides Freddy? The company cook, Gertrude. Oh, I knew it. Oh, there'll be a homicide. Why do you say that? Did you see Mr. Crater's eye? Gertrude gave him that beautiful shiner. Dad, I'll get them out of here if they have to jump out of windows. Maybe there's still a chance. Get them to sneak all this junk out into the hallway and leave by the service entrance. I'll go and keep Honeywell and Crater in the bedroom. Well, sit down, gentlemen. We're all ready, aren't we, Margie? Uh, there'll be a slight delay. Why don't you take a walk around the block or something? Uh, hello, Mr. Honeywell. Freddie, what are you doing here? Ladies and gentlemen, in affording you the pleasure of your first course, sir, from Pilgrim's... Pilgrim's? Honeywell, what is this? Your idea of humor? Why, I know nothing about this, I swear. All right, you're responsible for this. Uh, well, Mr. Honeywell, I, I give you my word, I, I... Well, don't just stand there. Get out. Yes, sir. You! Stay out, Gertrude. Stay out! Yeah, who said so? Honeywell, if you were a younger man, I'd punch you right in the nose for doing this to me. That's no way to talk, Crater. I'm sure everything can be explained. I am not the slightest bit interested. And as far as our business is concerned, it's off. 
Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Get out of here, you, and take every bit of that blasted tin plate with you. Tin plate, huh? Now, Gertrude. <coughs> well, here's a kiss to remember it by. Ouch, my head. Oh. Mr. Honeywell, are you all right? Yeah. Am I hurt much? Oh, you're perfectly all right. Your eyes are getting black, that's all. All right, you're fired. But, 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 Mr. Honeywell... You can't do that to Dad. It was my fault, not his. Get out, both of you. Mr. Honeywell, is that polite? No, oh, it's his home. He can order us out. I mean to point. Yeah. Poor Dad. Yeah, looks like your father's really fired this time. And it's all my fault. Freddie, I've got to do something. Well, the way I figure it, it's all Mr. Crater's fault for being so one way about things. Freddie, you just gave me the answer. Oh, Margie, there's that look again. Why can't I keep my big mouth shut? Yeah, I wonder how Mr. Crater would feel if he got fired. I knew it. Here comes trouble. Maybe it'd make him a little more charitable toward others. Margie, I beg you, let bad enough alone. Maybe the shock, the humiliation would soften him up. Then I could get him to go to Mr. Honeywell and intercede for Dad. You make the wildest thing sound so reasonable. I'll call the local BB office and find out who's president of the company. And then, Freddie, can you borrow a Western Union cap from someone? Margie, this time I mean it. I'm not getting mixed up in another one of your wild ideas. Now, Freddie. I mean it, Margie. Really? <laughs> his room. And remember, give me a couple of minutes before you knock. Okay. Yep. Well? May I see you for a few minutes, Mr. Crater? I'm sorry, but I... It's terribly important, otherwise I wouldn't bother you. Oh, very well. Come in. Yeah, won't you sit down? Thank you. I can only stay a minute. I'm afraid to leave my father alone too long. He's ill? Well, not exactly sick, but... After all, my father is along in years, and... It so happens that your father's age is the same as mine. Oh, oh, I don't mean he's really old. I mean, well, losing something you've worked 22 years for can hit you pretty hard up here. Really, Miss Albright, I don't know why you bother me with all this. I didn't discharge your father. Mr. Honeywell did. Well, I thought maybe if you call Mr. Honeywell up... I'll do nothing of the sort. I wouldn't extend George Honeywell the courtesy of addressing him. But my poor father... Oh, come now, Miss Albright. Your father's a well-preserved man. He'll get by. You think so? Absolutely. What's a job nowadays? Why, well, they're ten cents a dozen. Look at your help-wanted columns, fat in the telephone book. Excuse me. Telegram, sir. Oh, thank you. Here, boy. Thank you, sir. All right. What? Something wrong, Mr. Crater? It can't be true. After I've given them the best 19 years of my life. Who? My firm, the B.B. Cooking Way Company. Without a word of warning, they fire me. Oh, no. I'm an old man. What will I do? Well, I get another job. Oh, come now, Mr. Crater. You're a well-preserved man. You'll get by. But when you lose something you work so hard for, it does something to you up here. You'll get another job. You really think so? Oh, they're ten cents a dozen. Well, look at your help wanted columns. Fatter than a telephone book. Now I know what your poor father's going through. You know what I think I'll do? What? I think I'll call him up and offer my sympathy. Oh, would you, Mr. Crater? Then I'll call up Mr. Honeywell, and when he finds out you two are friends... I'm glad we're on the same team again, all right. So am I, Mr. Honeywell. You know, I'd have missed you. Now, don't ask for a raise. <laughs> all I ask is that from now on, Margie stays out of our business. Oh, she will. I'm sure this thing has taught her a lesson. Excuse me. 
Well, well, well. Crater, my friend, Albright and I thought we'd drop in with offerings of peace. Honey, well, I don't like you. Margie, what are you doing here? Now, don't get excited, Dad. I can explain everything. All right. You have my deepest sympathy. I know what it means to be the victim of a heartless employer. Now, just a minute. All I can say, old man, is buck up. Chin up. Oh, Mr. Crater, I appreciate your sympathies, but, Margie, something tells me that you better stay right here. Yes, Dad. Always remember I'm your friend. Oh, Mr. Crater, that's the best thing you've said. Now we can go ahead with our deal. What deal? You know, the one we were going to close last night between your company and Honeywell and Todd. Oh, that's all off. If he's your friend, why is it off? Because I'm no longer with BB Company. I've been fired. What? <laughs> yes, I haven't got the authority to even dot an eye on the contract. Well, this is a fine how do you do. Hmm. Hello? Yes? Buffalo? Yes, Mr. Beebe, this is Crater. I just got your wire. You didn't send me a wire. Well, I just received one signed by you saying I was fired. I'm not? Well, thank you, Mr. Beebe. I feel the same toward you. Yes, sir, I'm leaving tonight, and I'll see you on Monday. Uh, goodbye, sir. <laughs> Another one of your practical jokes, eh, Honeywell? What are you talking about? That phony wire I received saying I was fired. Did you send it? Margie, come back here. Yes, Dad. Did you send Mr. Crater a fake telegram? <sighs> Dad, I did it for your sake. That girl's a juvenile delinquent. And that pilgrim stuff last night. That was for my sake, too, I suppose. No, that was for Freddy's. You mean to say that she was responsible for last night, too? Well, I was only trying to help everybody. To what? A hospital? Mr. Crater, you said about enough to my daughter. That's all right, Dad. I'm so mad I could fight every man in this room. Now, look here. I've had enough of this. I'll give you all just ten seconds to get out of here. Now, just a second, Crater. There's no reason why you and I can't be friends. Honeywell, I wouldn't touch you with a 12-foot pole. And that's giving you two feet the best of it. All right, consider that insult your dismissal notice. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Thanks to you, I've lost my job twice in two days. And I hope you're satisfied, letting your childish fear of a competitor cause all this fuss and put my father out of work. I beg your pardon. I... When you got that wire, you knew how it felt to lose your job. You wrung your hands and moaned and groaned all over the place. Now, see here, miss. And then when you wanted to offer sympathy to my father, I thought you had some feeling. But you fooled me. You're nothing but a big stuffed shirt with a BB colander for a heart. <laughs> oh, Dad. Hello? Uh, Miss Albright, it's for you. Hello? I just made my first sale, Margie. Yeah, down here in the lobby. I got to talking to a fella, and he bought a pot. Well, that's swell, Freddy. Uh, not so good here. It just didn't work out. Bye. Uh, wait. Albright. I guess I have acted a little silly. Let's forget all this nonsense, huh? <laughs> Do you mean it? I mean it. Any man with a daughter like yours deserves a break. I don't know how to take that. <laughs> it's a compliment, believe me. <laughs> and Albright, since you're no longer working for Honeywell, I'll make a deal with you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to him, Albright. He thinks I was serious about letting you go. <laughs> Well, Mr. Honeywell, just to show you that there's no hard feelings, I'll let you in on the deal with one proviso. Anything at all, name it. I want a new iron-bound contract, five years with no options. Oh, that's ridiculous, preposterous. All right, it's a deal. Good understanding between us, all right. Good relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Margie, would you come down and bail me out? What happened? I sold a pot without a license to a... a policeman. Come on, let's go. <laughs> All right, so everything just happened to work out okay. 
You'll have to admit I cooked up a wonderful new deal for you. I'll say you did. You almost sent it up in smoke. Well, that's my little Margie. Thank <laughs> you. 